What's going on, everybody? It's the Gas Souls Podcast back with this week's episode, and it is the uh, finale. It, uh, the NASCAR season is over. Can you believe it? Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I really thought there was more to that. No, I can't believe it. It feels like it was five years of a season, but it also went by quick. You know what I mean? Like, when I really sit back and think yeah. about it, it seems like just yesterday we thought Newman was dead and everybody was mad because Trump was at the 500. Yeah. And then... We were watching iRacing on Sundays, and then, I don't know. <laughs> it felt like five years and five days at the same time. It's the weirdest thing ever. Yeah, it was like a two-part season, man. It's like it's like everything that happened before the COVID stuff, NASCAR-wise, other than the Daytona 500, it's like my, it's, it's been erased from my memory almost. Like, I can't even mm-hmm. remember the races that were running or who won them. But uh, and then ever since that, yeah, we were watching fucking iRacing for so damn long, and then once everything came back because everything kind of came back at the same time sports wise like nascar was a little early but once sports like fully came back i mean it's just like i don't know i I basically run off sports so it's like you know it's the time goes uh way faster once everything starts getting back going but uh yeah what a fucking season man holy shit yeah i uh overall like all things considered i think it was a pretty good year um it had potential to be a really bad year, and I think it was really good. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, I was gonna say we certainly. Uh, everybody listen to the podcast, man. Y'all realize like we we just saw one of the wildest, like probably gonna be one of the most talked about seasons in NASCAR history, just with the, all the extra horse shit. I mean, this is a season like we've never seen before, really, um, for good and for bad, I guess. But um, it, it happened regardless. Um, so I guess we uh, we gotta jump right into Phoenix. What a fucking, uh, I don't know about you. I was sitting there watching Phoenix, man. I was like, man, there's, there's gotta be one more race, right? Like it just didn't feel right ending it at Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I liked it given the current direction of NASCAR. I think Phoenix was a good move. Um, my only complaint was, well, I had two complaints. PJ one. Don't know why they did that. Made it like want to be a momentum track when it shouldn't be a momentum track. And two, I think we should always end the season at a track we don't already go to. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, and Homestead was great because it was so unique. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe if the, this Atlanta reconfigure happens or the Auto Club reconfigure, yeah. maybe they could end it somewhere like that in the future. But I really liked it, especially with the current packages. Trucks haven't been good at Homestead in a while. Xfinity's good everywhere, so Xfinity would have been good at Homestead, but they were good at Phoenix too, in my opinion. And Cup was way better than what it would have been at Homestead. I know people said the Phoenix race was boring, but could you imagine how boring it would have been at Homestead? You know, I have to imagine. We went there earlier <laughs> this season, and it was boring as fuck. And Denny Hamlin won, yeah, Denny Hamlin oddly won. enough. Oh, Jesus um, Christ. Sorry, I just opened up Twitch. Sorry, everybody who just heard whatever the fuck that was. Why, what is this? <laughs> an introduction video for while you're away? Why would I oh have an God. introduction video for while I'm away? <laughs> if you can't be alive, that fucking guy. That's all I ever hear of it. Fuck this you guy. How do I take like... How do I delete this? I think you just have to make an introduction video. Oh, all right. Hi, right, this is my introduction yeah. video, so this guy will fuck off. Thanks I for coming to my channel. Last night, how to put you on my streamers I recommend list, too, by the way. I felt bad because I'd seen me on yours and I didn't know how yeah. to do it. <laughs> yeah, I was going through my settings once and I was like, well, I only have one Twitch friend. It's my good friend, Travis. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's go. kind of the same boat I'm in. So I was like, all right, well, <laughs> cozy. I saw you do it. And I was like, man, I'm an asshole. I'm not featuring him down there. <laughs> and so I had to figure it out last night. I was, uh, I got it. Not like anybody's going to come to me and not know who you are, but. Hey, you never know. Hey, Maybe been... some foreign exchange students just getting into <laughs> iRacing hey. and they find me. Hey, you've been putting on some big meaty races, man. Put on, uh, give, give them the plug for those of uh, those, uh, everybody. I'm having a stroke. You know what I'm getting at. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, we're doing a, um, <laughs> it's going to sound crazy, but hold on to your heads. We're doing 24 hours at Martinsville in Mazda Miatas. Um, but Cozy can attest, it is really fun. We ran some races last night. Not 24-hour races, obviously. But yeah. it's going to be a true test of equipment and driver sanity. Um, even maybe a slight physical test. Oh, yeah, um, probably. We've, we've got teams starting to shape up uh, now. We've got some strong teams entered. But we also have about seven people who have entered so far to run the whole thing solo. Um, I expect maybe two of them to complete it. Um, 
But man, the balls it would take to do 24 hours at Martinsville solo. They're going to try it. Um, so you can go to my Twitter or the Mooncar Twitter, but my Twitter, most of y'all know my Twitter. It's in the description and find a link with the sign up sheet. Uh, if you don't have iRacing, watch on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash moonhead. We're going to make it a charity stream uh, for Toys for Tots. I'm not going to be able to volunteer with them this year because of the, the Rona, most likely. So I want to do something for them. So we're going to try to try to raise a little bit of money uh, to help make some kids have a good Christmas. So, oh, all right. That's something I can um, get behind. Yeah. So, and I mean, it may be the last Moonhead stream ever because I'm going to try to commentate for 24 straight hours <laughs> and it may just be the end of me. I may be, y'all may be donating on my behalf by the end of it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, oh, it man. should be a good time. If, if you fall asleep, man, you're going to kill the whole stream snoring over top. <laughs> yeah, well, see, anytime I get really tired, I'm going to I think I'm, I'm going to go buy a second webcam here. Uh, so I'll have my green screen cam and then I'm going to have one over here at my desk where anytime I get tired, I can go to a scene and it'll be picture in picture and y'all can see me and hopefully somebody can like, give me a phone call or uh, <laughs> yeah. I may end up giving one of y'all like my brother's phone number so he could come over here and <laughs> wake me up if he needs to. So I don't sleep through the whole thing, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I've obviously fallen asleep a handful of times now. I'm worried about you, man. We're going to have to get you. We got to, you have to do that sleep test. You might have to get a fucking CPAP machine without you fucking snore. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not that bad all the time. I don't know what it is. It's, uh, it's, I, I have sinus problems and I think that's a good portion of it. Um, I hope, I mean, hopefully I don't watch me fucking choke to death on my stream. <laughs> and snore no. That would be a hell of a clip right there. <laughs> that would definitely be my most viewed Twitch clip. Fucking fucking idiot dies during 24 hours stream because he <laughs> snores to death uh, i could think of several titles for that one um, it'd be like that kid twisting his ankle during that school performance oh man Did i missed that. that video nah. it was like kid kid twists ankle doing uh doing girly dance and cries like a bitch or something oh, that's man. the title of the video oh, like, they did not hold back in the video title and i feel like that's how it'd be <laughs> if i died uh doing <laughs> due to snoring during a 24-hour stream but yes sign up we got some cool entries we've got uh and some more rumors i've heard of some potential entries gonna be cool we got one team uh that's thinking about joining that only one of them has iRacing, racing, so they're all just meeting at this dude's house. And they're gonna be legitimate <laughs> That's driver the coolest swaps. one so far. Yeah, so I had to hit them up today and be like, "Yo, y'all are gonna actually have to self penalize when you do your swaps, so you're not beating some of these other teams out oh, because yeah. they'll get mad." You know, it, it's gonna be competitive. And the thing is, what's gonna make it interesting is how easy it is to get lapped and get unlapped there. So. And, and damage and fixing those Miatas and having a, we saw a guy last night in one of the Miata races run 75% of the race on three wheels. So oh, it's yeah. going to be a true <laughs> endurance race. Like I'm excited. I think it's going to be cool. Yeah. Sorry. We're so all over the place, but that's the fun part about our podcast that we don't give yeah. a shit. So yeah. um, <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah, I opened Twitch anyways. It was, uh, I guess he hasn't run yet. We're, uh, I don't know how many Moon Sport drivers are left for this uh, hard to drive 300 qualifying going on right now. Tuesday night's the last night of qualifying. I wanted to see Preet run. Uh, we were talking with him mm -hmm. earlier. He's he's scheduled, scheduled to go up right now. Uh, Gary, shout out to Gary. He's still in the top 20, I believe. Um, there's st so many names now. It's uh, <laughs> always Every time I look over, the uh, damn leaderboard's on 49 to 72. But uh, looking good right now. I think uh, DT's uh, going to be painting my... Uh, scheme up here soon on his stream as well. So, uh, shout outs all around. But, anyways, yeah, hard to drive coming up uh, Friday night. I think I'm in. I think. I think we're good to Hell go. Oh, yeah. I hope Gary transfers in. He's sitting uh, 17th. It's Presley, close. Presley had a rough ride. Um, he's another Moon Sport guy, but I think he'll do fine in the twin 125s. I think he's pretty much locked into that whole bracket. Um, so hopefully he does well. There's a lot of people though who have surprised me who are well outside the top. Like I see Seth and Donnie, well outside the top twenty. Yeah, I know. Uh, Darrison Hogan fiftieth, uh, Blake Bryant fifty fourth, Colton Salick. Like there's a lot of really good people back here in the back. Um, so I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. <laughs> Frisch, another Frisch was one I thought would probably would have a chance to actually just qualify in off time. 
Um, but he's back there in 86. He was not too happy with his results. Yeah, this is probably one of the weirdest qualifying sessions ever, honestly. I mean, just, just the uh, it's, uh, a lot of names you wouldn't expect to be there, myself and fuck included. I'll tell you that, but... Uh... It's going to be, dude, I can't wait. <laughs> dude, the, the actual race, 195 laps or some shit. I don't know how many tire sets, but, I mean, it's just like everybody's going to be drifted on, on the straightaways. <laughs> it's going to be a uh, it's gonna be a hell of a time. So uh, there's another. That's a Friday night for anybody who wants to watch that. I'll probably be streaming it if I, if I do indeed make it. I didn't save my qualifying run, so I guess I could still get DQ'd. So <laughs> I didn't save my replay. But uh, anyways, let's, uh, let's get back on the Phoenix then, shall we? Um, fucking Chase Elliott. As a NASCAR Cup Series champion. I mean, what a timeline, I tell you what. I mean, I think most people probably thought he'd get one eventually, but like already. Like, remember, it seems like just yesterday he was choking away races left and right. And yeah. now he's a Cup Series champion. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and fucking Hedrick Motorsports, man. How about that? I didn't even think of it, but like, <laughs> they're champions again. I know. That's what I was talking to somebody the other night, and I remember just a year or two ago, everybody's like, oh, Hendrick's the next Roush. They're going down. Fucking, they'll never be the same. <laughs> Jimmy's going, and that's going to be the end of it. And damn, if Jimmy ain't the worst one over there right now. I hate to say it, but <laughs> I fucking, mean, even fucking William Byron was out running his ass for most of the season. Yeah. So I think the future of Hendrick is great. Yeah. I think they, they're in good hands dude i mean they're gonna what <laughs> it's gonna be a larson chase elliott headliner and then i mean again bowman's still kind of getting his feet and alex bowman's already won a, ha- a couple of races now it's like dude i mean it was i mean looking back at it now it's crazy to think that that uh hendrick would end up like roush now but um but i mean they they had their struggles but like Hendrick Motorsports does, man. That's why they're the best for a reason, man. They turn that shit around real quick, and look at them now. <laughs> it's, uh, mm-hmm. That's fucking good for them, man. It's like uh, now with me being a Starcom fan, it's like uh, uh, you know, it's a it's a whole different story. But uh, uh, for being a Dale Jr. fan, uh, there at the uh, that second half of his career, man, I still uh, I still have ties to Hendrick, so I still want to see him do good. And uh, I'm really happy. I do. I just I can't get over Chase, man. Uh, he fucking showed up there at the end of the season, and I, I know a lot of people still complaining about the format. But I was, I was looking, and I was like, well, now I see why he's a champion, man. He won the last two races. That's the kind of shit you got to do. Uh, I mean, Hamlin and Harvick shit the bed for most of the playoffs. Really, think about it. That's another thing. Harvick man. did a little better, but at most of their success came in the regular season. And Chase. I would argue at times Chase was that number three car in the equation. You know what I mean? He maybe didn't have the wins, but he was very consistent up there doing good. Another one, Bowman was another guy like that. Bowman, a lot of people, I know people would have complained if he made the final four and he had a chance at Martinsville, but he was one of the most quietly consistent guys all year. So I don't know. People people bitch about the format. We talked about that last week. <laughs> yeah. But I think we've got – in all three series, I think every champion was fair and deserving. It wasn't like somebody just came out of nowhere and showed up for one race. It was yeah. pretty much guys who were up front competing all season. That's that's the thing with it, man. It's like you got so many competitive guys, and it's like I I, I get the argument. I, and trust me, I'd be upset if I was a Kevin Harvick fan and he won nine races and didn't win. And I feel like that's a big part of it. And I, I get the frustration. I'm sure you do too. But it's like at the end of the day, yeah. what uh, Chase Elliott, how many races did he win this year? Five? It was, I don't know, right off the top of my head. I, I know it was like every road course, wasn't it? And then a couple of ovals, maybe. Yeah, Did just, he win an oval? Martinsville? He won Martinsville, Phoenix, he won Phoenix. three road courses. Did he won three road courses? I think he won every road course. How many road did courses he? did we do? Uh, Daytona road course. Did he win that? Yeah. I don't know. For whatever reason, I thought Denny Hamlin won that. I don't remember. <laughs> no, Denny Hamlin about won that. He was catching him. Ah, uh, that's remember, okay. They didn't show Chase's uh, burnout. Everybody was mad. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, what other road courses was it then? Because they didn't go to Watkins Glen. They didn't go to Sonoma. Maybe they only was did it? two then. What was the other one? So he won four races. I the missed... Roval. Oh, Roval. Yeah, I knew I was missing one there. Um, yes, yeah, uh, I want to say um, I'm missing one more, I think. He won the All-Star race. He won the All-Star race. There might have been another point. Eh, it doesn't fuck him. Either way, point being... <laughs> Is that it's not like it was like a Ryan Newman situation where he didn't didn't win a race all season and went out there. Obviously Newman didn't win it, but uh, which still like by the way still Newman could have deserved it. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't think you could be upset if the Chase Elliott 
championship. I personally for me, I'm just I was excited. Like I'm not a Chase Elliott fan, but I realize like how big of a deal he is for just NASCAR in general. And I just feel like when when Chase Elliott wins, everybody's just kind of happy. You know what I mean? Like oh, more happy than not. And uh, breaking statistic. Uh oh, statistics. It, it was the short Charlotte after the late race caution fucked him out of the 600. The That's right. That's yeah. That Charlie race. That's right. Yeah. So I mean, he could have messed around and won a couple of more. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean. I think I mean I don't think like <laughs> I I don't know I don't know what to say at this point man it's like I just like if you, if you look at like the the Harvick and the Hamlin and and just how they fell off like I I get it but it's like that's the point of the whole system man you got to be like not only you got to be good in the regular like you don't even have to be good in the regular season I get it but it's like Kevin Harvick and all those you know Hamlin had those playoff points it's like I would I would imagine I don't I don't know if we have a statistic on that but Harvick had to have the most playoff points ever going into the uh, into the into the yeah. playoffs. It still fucked and it. It still fucked it. So it's like I don't know how you can be like I don't know how you could be upset at that. And everybody's like, well, you know, if if Kevin Harvick was so good and won nine races, then why the fuck didn't he show up there at the end? He should have been okay. just fine. It should have been. Yeah. I like I I get part of the frustration, but at the same time, you gotta be you gotta be like it's 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 no fucking you know it's no cakewalk, man. You still gotta show up, team and, and everything. And that goes back. You remember that uh, Jack bit on the? We, I don't know if we talked about it or not, but at Martinsville, that that penalty, man. It's a mm-hmm. it's a total team effort. That's what I like to see, and that's that's the kind of shit that wins championships, man. They fucking went out there and did it. It's a good honor. Yeah. That Jackman, man, <laughs> he's what a badass. Yeah, they get on his feet. <laughs> yeah, and people, I saw people sharing that Harvick would have clinched or whatever, which would have been boring with the old format. I hate people bringing up the old format, but even then, you could cry bullshit because let's say Harvick wins nine races early and then shits the bed late, and somebody like Chase comes alive. Like, does the last half of the season even really matter at that point? You know what I mean? Mm. Like, regardless, you're going to run into scenarios that could be viewed as bullshit no matter what. No matter what. Somebody's always going to play the system correctly and win it. Um, and I feel like we haven't really seen that a whole lot. The only season I could think of that maybe somebody snuck in and got a championship was... <laughs> People are probably going to be mad, but the the Jimmy one after Carl wrecked. No, I don't you, know that no. he really. You're totally right. I was the same way back. What was that? 2016. Um, I was saying that. I was like, let's be honest. Jimmy Johnson wasn't the fastest car. I think he started in the back, but he was he was like not one of the top guys. And then they, like half of them got wrecked there. Uh, I really thought Logano was going to get it then at that point, but he couldn't catch him there at the end. But yeah, Jimmy Johnson. I mean, it but was, he had run good through the playoffs yeah. i guess so yeah, it was won, still justifiable yeah he won martinsville and then he made the homestead he wasn't the fastest at homestead but he still got it done so i mean <laughs> yeah so i mean i can't really think of one only other one maybe the logano deal but he was kind of pulling a chase and was outside of the big three that season was the next best guy and he just happened to show up there at uh homestead and pass truex late so I don't know. I have, I'm yet to see a bullshit championship under any format. I, yeah. I, I just I can't discredit somebody winning a cup championship. I'll tell you, you still have to be the best to do it. I'll tell you this though: I didn't see a whole lot about uh, questioning uh, questioning Chase Elliott's championship. I didn't see a whole lot of people say that he didn't deserve it or the. the well, and that's, or the... Twitter's ruthless now, man. You'll fucking people be kicking your door in if you say something like that. <laughs> <They're> fucking, <laughs> people are crazy. Yeah, you damn right. Well. Uh, we got to talk about trucks and Xfinity too, man. Uh, fucking Sheldon Creed, I couldn't believe that. Can we talk about the the truck series and how that that uh how that just how that went down? I yeah. couldn't believe that. Poor Brett Moffat, man. It's like one thing to have a late race caution, but I couldn't believe they left him out there like that. Him and Zane Smith. At some point, the crew chief and uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And I I don't have any ties to to fucking NASCAR whatsoever. But in my uh, fucking opinion. You got like at some point the crew chief's got to be looking at the times and how they have fallen off and realize how many uh, uh <laughs> how big a tires are, are a deal. Like I I couldn't I couldn't believe it. They just fucking walked right past them. <laughs> and I and I yeah. get it like they could bring him in uh, or they could like look if uh, he was the leader at that point so they could have gone it could have gone either way but it's like at some point like the tires fall off so bad you have to pit. And that's what they did. And they just walked. Oh well, yeah, and you know you're gonna have a nice buffer because all those guys who aren't in the points battle in the back, 
are most likely going to pit. You know what I mean? So you're not going back to 30th. You're going back to like 12th. And you can make that up. I mean, Sheldon made it up in one corner. I don't I don't know what Brett's chief was thinking. He's and he fl- got murdered on live TV. <laughs> yeah, he's flaming his ass up, dude. I couldn't believe that shit. I guess he's not coming back there next year or what? I don't know. Yeah, he's not going to GMS next year. Boy, I mean, he fucking, he, he said broken legs weren't as much of a... <laughs> obstacle to overcome as his fucking kerchief i can't believe that i was sitting there watching that i was like oh my god he really just said that (laughs) yeah that's incredible don't stop he's already or stop he's already dead or whatever that (laughs) simpsons gif is yeah yeah, it was ruthless yeah but i mean he's he's got he's kind of got a point i mean poor guy he was like he didn't have a whole lot of wins but like it's fucking brett moffat man he's one of the best of the truck series if not the best um, but uh, yeah, man. Like I, I, I think I probably could have made the right crew chief decision there. Although Zane Smith, uh, I guess it was two GMS trucks that both did the same thing. Although they still won. But I mean, I don't know, man. I'd I'd be so pissed if I was Brett Moffat. I'd be just pissed in general, man. That poor guy. He deserves a, a top tier cup ride. <laughs> if if there's yeah. anybody out there who probably does, he's he's the guy. Um, but I've I've heard though. I have heard that Brett is not good about going out there and getting sponsors, and that's kind of hindered his career. Mm. I've heard that from multiple people. He's not. Um, I don't know. You, you look at somebody like a like Vargas, for example. You know, Vargas every day he sees it's like an opportunity to get a sponsor. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just looking on yeah. Twitter. Brett's not really that guy. Brett has enough talent. He doesn't necessarily have to be that guy. But I do feel like he could probably be somewhere a little better if he had the talent he had. Andy was a guy like, you know, Vargas out here looking for sponsors every day and trying to make the most of it. So that hurts him. I do think, though, eventually we'll see Brett get back to Cup and do some decent things. Yeah, I hope so, man. I feel bad for him, especially after how uh, Phoenix went down. But uh, <laughs> I think he should have had another one. Um, how about and- Sheldon, though? Chubby boy won. Yeah. I'm happy. I love when big boys win, and it was great. I'm disappointed yeah. he didn't have the mullet anymore. Yeah. Um, that really disappointed me. I'm but, excited man, for him, I'm dude. Happy. The I Cup like Series, Sheldon. yeah, the Cup Series needs another big boy, man, because we're kind of running out of him. We lost Tony Stewart, which was a which was a big one. Ryan Newman's still kind of out there, but he, we're we're gonna lose Newman here in the next year or two. We need another. Mm-hmm. We need another big boy in there to <laughs> shuffle shit up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. I'm, God, that's the thing. Like, we don't remember back in the day where a lot of the drivers were out there, and you could see their little pop bellies through the fire suit, oh, you know. Yeah. And <laughs> now they're all fucking cyclists. Yeah, I don't know. There's Terrible. just there's just something about the charm of a of a big boy in a stock car. I don't know. I like it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, fucking, especially when he had the mullet. Yeah, hell yeah. Fucking Sheldon, man. I was, dude, he popped out of that truck. I was like, God damn, has he got a CDL for that dumpy or what? <laughs> he's got a, he's got, he got a big old rump on him. Yeah, he's a big boy. But good on him, man. Like he was, uh, he's actually come a long way, too. I remember when he first came in, I was like, eh, I don't really know much about him. He wasn't really that fast, but man, he really He's uh, an off road guy, though. Yeah. That's, I, where he came that's from. something he's I didn't like, know about him. Yeah. Robbie Gordon. He's, uh, kind of like Robbie Gordon's protege or something too he uh he did a lot of stadium super trucks yeah that's pretty fucking uh, cool he used to two-wheel the super truck he was one of those that could put it up on two oh, wheels cool do a lap on two wheels oh that's um, that's really cool yeah so he uh i guess it just took him a little bit to get used to stock cars or whatever and as he said after his daytona win <laughs> i tear up a lot of shit so <laughs> he figured it out though and made things work and, man um, i'm happy i like i genuinely like there's a handful of drivers I like, and then there's a handful of drivers I genuinely like, 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 you know, and like mm-hmm. feel like I'd want to hang out with, and he's one of them. Yeah, yeah, that definitely seems like a cool ass. Uh, we got to talk about Xfinity, man. How about Austin Austin Cindric Xfinity Series champ? I've got to eat crow on this one. I never, I would have bet my ass that Austin Cindric would never be a champion in anything stock car related, and he proved me wrong this year. He. Had a hell of a year. I, I tell you what, man, he's another guy that's come a, a long a long way. And I talked about it a couple a couple of weeks ago, but um, he's uh, he's like, and I, that's another thing. The Xfinity Series and it wasn't quite as hefty as it was last year, but uh, either way, man, this was a big opportunity for him, and he came out and, and won a lot of races, and he be sure he could win on the oval, and obviously he's smooth as fuck on the road courses, but. Um, that was the thing, man. A lot of people were sleeping on him. I was surprised. Uh, I saw somebody was uh, some 
group of people were making picks on Twitter, and uh, you know it was like four or five picks or whatever. Not a not a single one of them was Cindric. Now I'm I'm not saying I didn't think I I thought that Cindric was gonna win. I'm just saying that 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 somebody picked Justin Haley over him. I was like eh, I, don't, I don't know about that, but um fucking Austin Cindric, man. I I I feel kind of bad for Briscoe, even though it didn't seem like. Yeah, he won a lot of raises, and he did what he needed to do. He's on a cup. I don't think he really gives a whole lot of a shit, but I'm sure he wanted to win it, obviously. But um, I just uh, – Briscoe was hit or miss, though. That's yeah, the thing. Cindric yeah. was, was hit or be decent, <laughs> and yeah. Briscoe was win the race or not run worth a damn, really. So I, I think it was fair. Um, but, yeah, I the thing with Cindric is just watching him – run a race now and seeing where he used to just step on his own dick or would do something completely stupid and run somebody over and how he's actually somewhat patient now mm-hmm. and can like put together a full race it's really it's crazy to see i don't know who <laughs> yeah. got through to him yeah but somebody got through to him big time because he fucking sucked yeah. when he first started he was terrible well yeah that's what i'm saying like there's like you don't see that happen too terribly often but like when you do it's like those are the guys that that are going to end up in cup because you can really see how they uh progress through the and and, you know some guys come through there and they just breeze through they win championships you know whatever but it's like some like that's that's when you really know when some of those guys come in they they fucking suck they're tearing up cars left and right and then they kind of like stenhouse is one of those guys you remember when he when he first came in man dude he got got benched because he wrecked so many damn cars and came back and won two (laughs) championships in a row and now he's kind of had a mediocre cup career but that's not totally his fault, but you have know. we ever seen a guy actually get benched in NASCAR before? Like I've seen him get fired for tearing up too much shit, <laughs> but like to legitimately get like, hey, we're gonna put you in timeout for a couple of weeks. You have to watch somebody else race, and not wreck, and then oh, you can come back. Yeah, that's just crazy to me, and it worked. Yeah, I mean it does work every once in a while. Fucking props to him, but uh, if somebody if you stick with a driver long enough, they'll start doing it. Look at Brandon Jones; he's yeah. finally. Yeah, he's I, another guy we he, used to roast all the time, man. Dude, he could be the next Austin Cindric. Yeah, odd. I mean, obviously it's taken him like eight years at this point. Yeah. It's way slower than Cindric, but next year we could be looking at a Brandon Jones fucking <laughs> running for a championship would be well, yeah. interesting. Somebody's gonna have to step up. Because I mean, Chase Briscoe's on the cup. There's another that was what, nine wins this season. So that leaves, mm-hmm. I guess Cindric will be back. Uh, in Xfinity, so it's kind of like uh, all guy will be there. So yeah, somebody else is gonna have to step up and. <laughs> well, I think next year will be more competitive than this year because the last quarter of this season was a hell of a lot more competitive in mm-hmm. Xfinity with Harrison Burton, uh, Gregson. He didn't really win as many races yeah, as he did early on, but he's really stepped it up and shown that he can have speed. He can't. He's kind of a. He's not as bad as Cindric was, but he's kind of the same way. Can't put a full race together quite yet. Yeah. Uh, once he figures it out, he'll start winning left and right. Allgaier is going to have a good year. You know he's going to have a good year. This was kind of an off year for him, but I'm sure he'll come back and do good things. And then um, Brandon Jones. So, and I mean, who knows? Somebody else may come in and just have a great year. You know what I mean? Brett Moffitt could, in our motorsports, <laughs> somehow go out there and win a bunch of races. Because they only have six employees. They're running top 10. If they hire maybe yeah, I, get I, up to eight I, or yeah. nine employees, they can start winning some races. Yeah, he's put together some really good runs for them, man. And you don't see that a whole lot with the fucking uh, the team that comes out of nowhere like that, man. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just how the Xfinity series has been, man. Just how, uh, like, you just got those, like, top handful of teams and then there's just so many like back like like family owned or just smaller teams man it's crazy um but uh fucking brandon jones man yeah he uh he might have a go at it next year he's he's definitely gotten a lot better and he stopped wrecking on on straightaway so that's uh that's always positive um but dude fucking justin allgaier man i was rooting for him man i wanted to see him win so bad i feel so mm-hmm. bad for him man it's like he makes a final four every year and it's just he's close but not quite and Phoenix yeah. too, man. I re- I think everybody was like, "Oh, this is this is where Justin Allgaier does it," and uh, he was close, man, but just not quite enough. Yeah, it seems like every time somebody is like, I don't. Everybody thinks one guy is going to dominate because of the track, and they never do. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like even Harvick. If Harvick had made the final four, and I'm sure they changed some stuff, tried some stuff for next season because they weren't really in contention, but he did not run good on Sunday. Yeah, he was like. Yeah. But that's, that's what I was gonna say with Hamlin. I thought he was gonna be a lot better than what he ended up being. 
Um, but he was just uh, fuck, man. I honestly, I mean, we both I might as well take a look at the playoff grids. We both had Denny Hamlin winning. Um, well, at least we had uh, we got him to the final four. But um, fucking Hamlin, man, <laughs> poor guy. It's just uh, another championship uh, has slipped away. Do you think he gets one, Hamlin? Yeah. I think eventually he will, but I mean, at this point, I don't think he needs one. I think if he if he runs five more years the way he's been running, and doesn't win a championship, he'll be looked at as like the next Mark Martin. Yeah, uh, yeah he's but... good enough. I mean, Hamlin's one of the. I, I guess without a championship, you say can't say one of the greats, but he is he's close to one of the greats. He's about as close as you could get. He's right there with Mark <laughs> Martin. Yeah, I mean, dude, he's fucking. Uh... He, I mean, he's going to be going for three Daytona 500s in a row coming up here in the yeah. next uh, two months, Two months, which is pretty fucking crazy as it is. Um, but, uh, yeah, I thought this was going to be the year for him, but uh, close, but not quite. Um, and, uh, yeah, I wanted to look at our uh, uh, total. Jeez, I keep on clicking on your playoff grid. I'm like, what the fuck am I looking at? <laughs> yeah. Glad that one. So we might, we'll increase the budget next year. Yeah, I was about to say it's our first year for the uh, NASCAR, <laughs> like for our podcast over the NASCAR year. So uh, you know, we come back stronger. <laughs> we learn, <laughs> and uh, we'll put together a better uh, playoff grid. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's we'll get a technical alliance with one of these big podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let us uh, let us know your playoff grids did. Uh, I think we both did pretty damn good. We had a couple bold predictions that didn't play off, play out, but you know. So it goes. <laughs> Either way, none of us got the correct. See, that's why I didn't want to. That's why I didn't want us to both pick the correct champion because <laughs> I didn't want us both to be wrong. I wanted to have a shot because I knew if you, uh, I, I, I wasn't sure about Hamlin, but I definitely thought this would be. If he was going to do it any year, this would be the one. So I, I went with him anyways. But I'll take it. Um, it's uh, it's man, it's hard to put together a fucking uh, full playoff grid. But uh, there you have it, man. Uh, so what the fuck do we do now? What do we talk about? <laughs> we talk about. <laughs> Rick Ware's son. Yeah, this I have no idea um, what, what what it's about. So. so, Rick Ware's son, not Cody, uh, his other son Carson, who I believe oh, ran an Xfinity race this year, uh, was basically called out for selling offshore bank accounts on his uh, Instagram. Oh. Uh, was trying to get people to buy it was telling them hey i'm a nascar driver i don't scam people then it made it to twitter and started blowing up and he threatened uh he said his account was hacked and threatened the people posting the screenshots with legal action which i thought was funny that he didn't threaten the supposed hackers with legal action the people posted screenshots uh were threatened with legal action uh then some more screenshots surfaced from snapchat of I guess him trying to sell marijuana or something. Hmm. Um, so basically, he's kind of living this street life <laughs> while also trying to be a NASCAR driver and trying to scam people <laughs> on Cash App and stuff. So it was just a really bizarre saga that blew up for like one day on Twitter and nobody's talked about it since. So I don't know what came of it. Well, that's uh, a fucking I, weird I really one. thought, yeah, I thought it was really, uh, that was, that's potential for weirdest story of the year right there that's not i didn't have that one on my 2020 bingo card <laughs> offshore bank accounts what the fuck so it's just bank accounts that aren't based in the u.s or something uh so i yes. guess they're not regulated and then you can buy them <laughs> and it, it's would not recommend doing yeah, it yeah yeah, it's, yeah you could, i guess what, you can do it you could do anything you know <laughs> that's, just a, that's just a weird one i wonder how many you sold I don't know. I mean, if we see him on track in February, we'll know he sold a few. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> uh, dude, I, uh, one thing I did uh, forget to mention, man, uh, we get to give a nod to Jimmy Johnson, man. I uh, I don't know about you, man, but uh, I got a little teary when uh, him and Chase were uh, hugging there at the end and uh, Rick Hendrick came in. Uh, again, uh, I was like, man. I remember back when I was a dumb kid and I was pissed because Jimmy Johnson won every week. It's like 2009, <laughs> you know. It's just all he yeah. fucking did was just win. And I mean, he won five championships in a row. And now, you know, now that I'm older and it's, uh, you know, so much time's passed. It's like, it's like, I still feel like people just like don't realize like five championships in a row. Like that is like one of the most ridiculous fucking things ever. 
<laughs> like, Jesus Christ, man. And then seven total. What a fucking beast, man. I just, uh, he won the first race I ever went to. I'll never forget it. 2012 Dover. Um, and the, the Circus Afro car. He actually won the first two races I ever went to. Then the Brickyard 400 later that year in the same car. <laughs> same chassis, at least. Uh, but, um, got to see him win a handful of times. So I thought it was, uh, uh, you know, looking back at it now, it's cool. I got to see him win. Um, but, uh, yeah, one of the, one of the greatest all, all time, if not the greatest, um, sucks to see him go. It's, it really, it kind of sucks to see him go out the way he did, man. I was really hoping he'd, he'd win one more. Uh, he, yeah. he kind of had the Dale Jr. exit, man. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, when you're a seven time champion, what, 83 race wins, he won enough. But, uh, no, it would have been cool to see him win one more for the fans. But, uh, it just, it, the year in a hole for him, man, you know, without the fans for, for a lot of the races, uh, you know, obviously without full fans, uh, especially, and then, um, yeah, it just, uh, didn't go his way, but, uh, fucking, we're uh, running out of childhood drivers. Yeah, I know. Right. That's kind Newman of... and Kurt are like the last of the, the wave when we were toddlers and yeah, then man. you'll have Kyle and Denny. Um, and then Harvick. I guess, oh yeah, Harvick, Harvick's in there. I don't know why I forgot about him. Uh, then you'll have Kyle, Denny, Keselowski. Uh, I guess you could factor Logano in there. Man, Logano's <laughs> about to be one of the OGs. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy to me. Yeah, I know. Dude, he's been in the sport so long now. What is it? He's been in there for uh, in the Cup Series for, like, what, 12 years already? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, did he, is he even 30 yet? I guess he's, what, 30 now? Uh, I would imagine. Uh, I don't know. Let's, let's give it a goog, shall we? Um, Joey Gano. Uh, 30 years old. Yeah, there you go. That oh, is man. fucking crazy, man. I remember when he was fucking 18 years old in the Cup Series. Uh, sucking there for a while, but he won that New Hampshire race on the because it rained or whatever. <laughs> yeah, um, that's dude. That's so crazy, man. Um, and uh, dude, he's got so much more career left in him too. Uh, eventually, I mean, he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be the the guy to beat. Uh, once once we lose the the Kevin Harvick and uh, I guess uh, see how long Hamlin Hamlin goes and and some of those other guys. Fucking uh, Ryan Newman's another guy. I don't want to lose Ryan Newman, man. We need Ryan Newman. Yeah, I mean, it, the rumor is next year's is last year. Ah, man. Yeah, I don't blame him. I'm honestly, I'm kind of surprised he's made it this far. But uh, props to him, man. That that motherfucker. He's like Frank Gore, man. He just doesn't quit. He just keeps on going. <laughs> but uh, I guess you don't know who Frank Gore is, do you? Not a fucking clue. Oh, he's a 37 year old running back that just keeps on running, baby. <laughs> Anyways, he plays for the Jets. He just lost again but uh, anyways um yeah anyways shout out to jimmy man I know there's a lot of jimmy fans out there uh hey at least you guys get to watch some indycar now have fun with that uh still slower than marco andretti i think but uh, i'm sure we'll figure it out uh man i was I'm, i wish jimmy would just commit to doing a full indycar season <laughs> you know what i mean he only needs to do like three more races <laughs> might as well, well right? he, he I, wants to spend time with his daughters i guess and doesn't want to commit to all that i, I mean i'd love to see it I yeah. would actually watch IndyCar, but I get it. Yeah, I get it too. I just, uh, man, especially like this. It's funny too because this would be the year to to do a full IndyCar schedule because not only there's only three oval tracks, um, and uh, yeah, they got the the aero screen and everything on there too. So, um, but uh, yeah, close enough. We'll see. I'm I'm ex I'm really excited to see how he does um, in IndyCar, and then we got a uh, what's his face coming over. I can't even remember his name. Um, what the fuck's his name from uh, Supercar? Uh, <sighs> Scott McLaughlin? Yeah, yeah, there it is. That yeah, there you go. All right, well, uh, yeah, I wanted to see. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's another guy, man. It's gonna be. It might be a good IndyCar season. It also might not be. But hey, at least there's a there's a couple fun drivers coming in there and shake it up. But uh, hey, we'll see how it goes. Anyways, sorry, I, I name was blanking me there for a minute. Uh, what the fuck were we talking about? Like you. Oh, hello. Um, should we talk about uh, or should we do the mailbag? I think we should do the mailbag. Oh, it's a recurring uh, it's mailbag segment time. on here. We need to get a we jingle. Probably not do it. We need to get a jingle or something for the mailbag. Anybody got any good jingles? I could probably find one. Yeah, we should get a mailbag jingle. I don't know how how uh, how I do a jingle, but you should start recording these. You're better with that stuff than me. You got to Yeah, uh, I I got the Stream Deck over yeah. here. I can get anything. I, I really need to buy the, it. the NFL draft noise. <laughs> <laughs> well considering our next episode you know we might uh we, 
we might be able to work some stuff out there with that. I really need to buy a stream deck though, but uh, go ahead with it. Go buy one. Yeah, I, one. <laughs> dude, I got so much stuff I want to buy. I fucking uh, I, I got a CPU on order that I thought was gonna be coming here soon. I just got an email that it's uh, oh yeah, by the way, AMD's like yeah, well, there's too many orders and we didn't get enough, so uh, yeah, we'll send you an email uh, early December, but it's probably gonna be January to March. So <laughs> fuck yourself. <laughs> Uh, between that, I don't understand these fucking th every technological thing now they announce it next greatest and revolutionary oh thing, God. and they sell like four of them. Yeah, it's crazy. Are they like? Can do I, these things grow? Do they have to? Like, is there like a season for them? Are they yeah. farming? These this needs to be a here? fucking rant. What the fuck are we doing? There's no 3080s to be found. I want a 3080. Everybody else wants a 3080. Where are these graphics cards? How the where the fuck do you buy a next gen console at? Huh? What the fuck? I can't. Even, I can't figure out where to uh, buy a PS5. Couldn't buy one of the. That's. Uh, I. I went onto Sony's website and I was like, all right, that you know, they they make the motherfuckers. Why wouldn't it be on their website? I go on their website. That should be the first fucking thing I see. Pre-order our our next gen money maker. It's nowhere to be found on the fucking website. I was like, what the what the what the fuck? All this shit, man. It fucking uh, everything's just sold out. Now the fucking CPUs. I didn't think I'd have to wait for the CPU, but like I, I don't, I don't mind waiting. But I'm like, I, there's nothing more frustrating when they hype something out. It's like, oh yeah, it's finally coming out. You know, all this new stuff. Pre-order, pre-order, pre-order. It's like, oh, what the fuck? Now we gotta wait half a year. What the, what the fuck is this shit? I don't get it. Anyways, there's my rant. Mailbag, mailbag. All right, first, uh, completing my DoorDash order while you're in. Oh, what that. you get? Uh, uh, Chili's triple dipper. Oh. It's, uh, I get double sliders, Ooh. so I get, uh, what would that be, like four sliders, and then six little boneless wings. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, nice buffalo bitch nuggets. <laughs> uh, uh, Dylan Holland with the first question, askmoonhead at gmail.com. I guess we'll keep doing the mailbag. Yeah, we'll keep doing the mailbag anytime we have an episode. Uh, hey, Travis and Cozy. Most people, including myself, have worked for a company or business. As someone that has only worked for a year, I have a lot of funny memories of some of the customers that have come through the go-kart track I work at. Has there been any funny moments from when you guys are on the job? I appreciate the podcast to keep up the great work. Thanks, Dylan Holland. So, I was briefly a yard truck driver at a distribution center. For those of you who don't know what a yard truck driver is, we drive these cool little trucks that look like big trucks. And when the big trucks drop off their trailers, we pick up their trailers and take them to the appropriate uh, door uh, to be loaded. Or if it's on the shipping side, we pick them up, take them to the scales, weigh them, make sure they're, uh, they're up to standard or whatever. And then we go back them into a parking spot. Really fun job, actually. I sat out there, hooked my phone up to the radio in it, listened to Sirius XM NASCAR radio all day and uh, drove around a big parking lot. Um, I saw a lot of funny shit out there. Um notably anybody who, who knows anything about truck driving will think this one's funny so on these big trailers the rear wheels actually slide um you can pull a little lever and uh lock the trailer brakes and move the trailer and actually move those wheels the tandems they call them up towards the center of the trailer uh just for like weight reasons or whatever well uh we had a guy drove a Swift truck, and Swift truckers are notorious for just absolutely sucking at what they do. Um, <laughs> he took off tearing through the lot uh, with the tandem slid forward, but they weren't locked. So he was hauling ass through there, and he had to get on the brakes pretty quick, quick and those tandems slid all the way back and hit the rear bumper of that trailer and about threw him through the windshield. <laughs> it was the, the look on that man's face. It was the funniest thing I had seen up to that point. Um, I also saw a guy who drove, I don't think it was a Swift truck. He backed clean into another trailer and moved it an entire parking spot over. And then when the people there, so like the, the yard, they called it yard, the yard out there. The yard management people have to come out there and document it so one of us don't get blamed um, or wouldn't get blamed. And then our company would get the bill rather than the bill going to the other trucking company. Um, basically, he knocked the fuck out of this trailer, pushed it at least one lane over, and proceeded to get out of his truck and say he never touched it. <laughs> as his as his truck was parked in there sideways, and there's another trailer pushed over, plumb over there with damage all down the side of it. And he's like, I never touched it. I got close. I never touched it, though. Uh, 
So he must have been a NASCAR fan because he uh, he was swearing up and down. He never touched it. Um, other than that, I can't think right off the top of my head. I know I saw some funny shit out there because I remember laughing really hard. Um, I'm trying to think. Hey, uh, Slice so just ran the uh, ran uh, his qualifying run. Uh, I got that up. I just want to mention that eight two seven. Uh, good lap, oh, but solid. not quite enough for the top twenty. But solid lap. That's a solid lap. Yeah, I'll have to get back on the uh, the funny work stories though, because I uh, I know there's more. I know I I fucking I uh, I cut myself one time and bled like a stuck hog on oh. one of the air hoses, and I was bleeding like crazy, and I didn't want to go inside the building to ask for a band aid because I knew they'd write me up, even though it was. I mean, I just cut myself on a big deal. So I'd, uh, I forget what I wrapped my hand in, but I wrapped my hand in something, and the inside of that truck looked like a fucking murder scene, and I had to clean it up before I left. <laughs> um, Philip Wilson writes, For Cozy, I've been getting into F1, mostly due to your videos, All but right. as I am dumb, can you explain <laughs> what a work team status is? Thanks, guys. Bash. <laughs> a work team status? Yeah. I don't even know what that is. Is there context with that? I don't... Uh, the context is the entire fucking question. Uh, work team status? I don't, know. I don't know. Well, I'm happy that I, I've got. I'm, I'm, dude. At least let me say this. Uh, I'm super excited. The amount of people I've, I've gotten to F1. Uh, I know it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but it's, it's so different. It's, it's just, uh, it's a lot different than uh, American motorsports. I guess everybody's used to that. It's, uh, it's pretty neat to get into though. Uh, and I'm really happy. Uh, all the people have kind of got into it. But uh, yeah, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm still I'm still uh, getting into it myself. Really, I uh, I've really only been watching the last uh, couple of years. This is the first year though. I've really like been really hard about myself watching every single every single race and keeping up with it. Um, but uh, yeah, sorry, dude. I, I I don't know if there's some some uh, something. Oh, jeez. Yeah, no. never. Mind. I don't know. I don't know, dog. Wow. <laughs> yep. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I said it right, uh, then I didn't say it right, then I started... Oh, man, I don't talk about it. <laughs> um, okay, so this question, I didn't notice part of it, and it's really funny, so I'm going to have to look this up after I read the question. But uh, the subject line is Rip Chunk. Hey, Cozy and Travis, con correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe I read somewhere that Chunk's distant relative, holy fuck, is into racing, uh, racing with up-and-coming spotter got Juan low <laughs> could they make a move to nascar <laughs> I, I guess that's cozy could they make the move to nascar <laughs> got one <Juan> low <laughs> i'm writing that down <laughs> so uh -oh. i guess that's a gift and then he also he added also please tell me i saw the video of big mike Harmon taking a tumble over the pit wall saturday if not it's on his team twitter thanks oh, for keeping no. me entertained at work boys I didn't know about this. Uh, oh, no. So I'm going to look on Twitter. Hey, what was that name? Uh, what? Uh, got one low. Got one low. Yeah. Got one. <laughs> got one. Uh, what's the team Twitter? I'm, I'm looking at MHR Racing, and they haven't tweeted. In... Oh, here we go. Boss man does whatever it takes, even if it means standing. I did. I saw this. I didn't know that was Mike. Oh man, send it to me. Yeah, I'll uh, yeah. run energy. some play-by-play -play action here. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, that is Mike's belly. Oh, he's reaching for it, reaching for it up and over. Oh man. <laughs> is he? Oh, I... oh, oh, <laughs> oh, Mike, Mike did take a tumble. Okay, so he's Fucking commitment to the team. Oh, morning. man, I'm going to retweet this right now. Uh, so you guys go back and uh, and go through my retweets. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, so he's behind the wall and he's doing that. Uh, He's doing that stretch <laughs> to get the wheel. And he just goes to scotch over. Oh, oh, shit. No. <laughs> I respect it though. Hell yeah! We need to add the uh, the Vince Wilson. The wheel is still imperfect, and then when he gets it, he has done it. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, man, I love my carbon man. That's awesome. Um, 
All right, Grant Bailey writes, Hello there, Travis and Cozy. Hope all is well anyway. One, who do you think Hendrick Motorsports' weakest link next season? I say it's William Byron. I say William Byron as well. Yeah, I mean, probably. I mean, I think Byron's with Hendrick till the Liberty money runs out, and then he'll be off somewhere and probably pull a Logano and have a successful career. I mean, I think he could have the potential to maybe be better than Bowman if he has a bad uh, season, but, but, Not prob- a chance but hell. probably Bill. Not a chance in hell. Uh, second, <laughs> non-racing question. What's your least favorite King of the Hill episode? Mine has to be the one where Bill leads the food shelter and everyone thinks Hank is an asshole. <laughs> P.S. Can we get a video stream where you talk about King of the Hill? It's an amazing show with plenty of theories. Anyway, have an awesome off-season. Keep digging. Sincerely, Grant Bailey, local dumbass. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't have a least favorite King of the Hill episode. Um, yeah, I definitely don't have one. They're, they all, I, I love King of the Hill. Some of the later seasons aren't as good, but I, I wouldn't say they're least favorite episodes. How many seasons are there? I'm still in season three, I think. I think there's 13. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I guess still, I still got plenty. Yeah. Yeah, your season three, I think, is where it starts getting really good. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, I had a lot of good episodes because I had the, I'm just up here to kill myself and the, uh, <laughs> yeah. I had the, 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 where they become firemen that, uh, that episode. Yeah. So, oh, God. You'll get to, there's a couple two parters coming up too that Ooh. are really good that tell really cool stories. Right. Uh, and then there's, I, I through season three to like season six, there's a lot of like it almost becomes like a soap opera in a way. Like it carries storylines. Oh, okay, yeah, I got multiple you. episodes. So it, it's really good. It, it's gonna get really good coming up here. I think King of the Hill does a really good job with that. We're like Family Guy. Somebody will die one episode, or yeah. die at the beginning of the episode, and they're back alive at the end of the episode with no explanation. You know what I mean? Like King of the Hill, yeah, <laughs> they do a good job of keeping it somewhat realistic. That was the one thing I kind of like Family Guy is that at some point you could tell they just stopped giving a fuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I thought that was just really funny to me. <laughs> oh man! All right, last question comes from Brett Nutson. Hi, Travis and Cozy. My question this week is, do you think NASCAR F1 and IndyCar could all race on the same weekend? And if they could, which track? I think Coda or Indy Road Course. Sincerely, Brett. I think they could. I don't think it would work. I think it would be a logistic nightmare. Uh, I think all three series would get into a big dick measuring contest. IndyCar would feel really bad because nobody would give a fuck about them. NASCAR would get their pride hurt because F1 would probably be bigger on the worldwide scale. And then F1 and IndyCar people would be mad when NASCAR drivers actually put on a show on the road course instead of just riding around. So I don't think it would ever happen. Jeez, all on the same weekend? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't even think there'd be enough time for that. I mean, if it's, uh, I mean. If I it's it, premiere series only, like F1, IndyCar, and Cup. Yeah, but I mean, still, that's a lot of practice qualifying and racing you got to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, on a Thursday. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I was. Uh, I mean, you said weekend, so I mean, if we're backing up to Thursday, then yeah, we'll give them enough time. But uh, that's uh, the problem with that though is that's that's three series, and all three series all have their own rules and certain ways they go about things. So putting them all on the same racetrack, uh, probably. I don't really know anything about running series, but I would imagine they all three have different ways about going about things. I would imagine putting <laughs> all three of them together probably just wouldn't work. Um, but, uh, hey, it'd be something. I'd tell you that. I'd go. <laughs> if, I, if it was in the U.S., I'd try. All right, so that's mailbag at moonhead at gmail.com. And now time for a news story. Oh. Um, and I actually found it this afternoon. It's not really a news story, but it's going to be a news story. A... <laughs> It's really funny. <laughs> uh, a, I get. Oh, let me let me make sure I get his uh, his title right. A county commissioner who also ran for Congress up in Pennsylvania, Republican, uh, did not win his election. Oh. He tweeted earlier this afternoon, "What Trump built in four years, Biden will destroy in four months." And before we get into this, how about last week? It was an election day episode, and we still don't know who the fuck the president is. Week later. Oh, yeah, it's right. Well, I guess, uh, 
Yeah, see, I, I don't really, so, like, what, what's, what, can I, like, for those of you, uh, I, I don't, I don't give a fuck about politics, I really don't, but, like, I don't really keep up, so, like, so, like, at this point, like, what does Trump do now? Because, like, so, I heard he's suing people. Yes, so, basically, Trump's trying to block a lot of the mail-in votes, because a lot of the mail-in votes aren't in his favor, but there's also a lot of fraudulent votes coming in, um, cases where hundreds of thousand votes in a row were for Biden and Biden only cases where dead people voted. Um, basically Trump knew mail-in voting wouldn't work in his favor. Democrats milked coronavirus to make sure people did mail-in voting because they knew it would work in their favor. And then there's shenanigans being played on both sides and the American people are going to suffer because of it. Oh, man. Um, so it's probably going to go to the courts, then it'll go to the Supreme Court, then it'll go to the uh, the, the House or whatever for for a big vote, and then I'd imagine probably we'll probably end up with, I'm not going to say probably, but the, it's a very real possibility we'll end up with a second term of Trump, which whatever I'm fine with it. I you got a racist white guy who could probably do good things for the economy versus a racist white guy who couldn't find his ass with both hands. We're <laughs> fucked either way, but we might have money one way. So I, you know, there's that. But back to this story. Uh, Dean Browning, <laughs> this guy up here tweeted, what Trump built in four years, Biden will destroy in four months. And a guy replied, what you mean, what Obama built in eight years, Trump trying to take credit for in first three years, Trump destroyed in three months with help from the Trump virus. Biden now has to get rid of the country of the Trump virus. Stay away from drugs, Dean. You're clearly high. So Dean here meant to switch to his burner account to try to work in his favor. But instead, he stayed on his verified Dean Browning account, which very clearly has a middle-aged white male in the profile picture because Dean Browning is a middle-aged straight white male and he replied with I'm a black gay guy and I could personally say that Obama did nothing for me my life only changed a little bit and it was for the worse everything under everything is so much better under Trump though I feel respect respected which I never do when Democrats are involved and there, there is a screenshot of this floating around. This really happened. So, verified Dean Browning PA, middle-aged white man in profile picture, started his tweet with, I'm a black gay guy. Oh my God. If this is not peak 2020, folks, I don't know what is. <laughs> you... <laughs> this <laughs> takes the cake. We've seen a lot of burner account blunders. I remember Skip Bayless. Oh, Skip Bayless writes, Loving the new show, Skip. You're the man. Fucking Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant bitching Durant. about his teammates. Uh, Fuck there's Kevin been Durant. several other. Oh, um, man. But Dean Browning claiming he is a black gay man probably takes the cake. That was, dude, you sent that to me earlier. That was one of the funniest fucking things we've ever seen. <laughs> there's nothing more satisfying than when somebody fucks up and, and they tweet on their actual account instead of their burner. And which I think is just fucking horseshit anyways. Like, what a chump you got to be to have a burner. You go around <laughs> trying to twist whatever you want for yourself. But uh, it's just like, how, okay, that's another thing. Like, how fucking stupid can you be? And it's like, and he tried to backpedal. I saw he was like, oh, yeah, I was trying to quote this guy or whatever. And the first, the first reply <laughs> to that, it was like, out of all the ways you can quote people on Twitter, that's how you did it? <laughs> and I was just thinking, like, what a fucking idiot. I was like, I don't know who this guy is, but it's like, <laughs> Fuck man. Yeah, no wonder you didn't win your election, buddy. If you My God. Here, but what's fucking... even worse though is like the fact that he's like backpelling and trying to like bullshit his way out of it and then people believe that. Like yeah. fuck out of here, man. God, that's what's wrong with America, man. It's people are just fucking assholes, man. They get caught on their horse shit and then they fucking start twisting it another way, you know what I mean? Fucking yeah. Christ. That's what I'm saying, man. That's why we're fought. we're we're stuck with people like this on one side, <laughs> and we're stuck with communists on the other side. We are fucked. Yeah, well, so, at least he made an ass of himself. I, that was that, fucking that, hilarious. That's a good thing. So, um, feels weird. We don't have to make picks now. Oh, <laughs> Usually, man. right now we'd be making. Picks. Oh, we can make picks for F one. <laughs> uh, pick Lewis. Hamilton. Lewis. Uh, where the fuck are they even? Uh, I, I, hey, there's a uh, they uh, announced a new track. It's in the Saudi Arabia. Uh, the, yeah, the, I saw people were up in arms about that. 
Yeah, everybody, uh, well, that's the thing. Apparently, so I didn't know a uh, whole lot about this, but uh, well, I didn't even really know anything about Saudi Arabia. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so uh, Lewis Hamilton's pretty been pretty vocal about their uh, their rights and everything over there, and now it's kind of awkward that they're going to race over there now. So uh, <laughs> I can see if, uh, see if Lewis Hamilton does anything special over there. Maybe he'll sit out or something. I don't know. That's what people have been doing. Uh, I bet. The balls on that man, if he shows up in that country, they'll kill you over there. They don't give a fuck. Yeah. If he's speaking out about him like that, yeah, it's uh he's got some fucking stones on him. That's just must, like it. Well, that's that's just a yeah, I mean, they must have a hell of a proposition for a racetrack. It's gonna be a, a, a street race at night, so I mean those are always pretty cool. Um but uh, I don't know if they have a map or anything of the uh the course. Uh, I haven't seen it, but uh hey, that's uh Did they race in Dubai? Um I believe so. Uh, I want to go to Dubai. Uh, is Abu Dhabi there <laughs> in Dubai? I don't, I don't know. I, I would just. Uh, I mean, I feel. I'm not gonna feel. I don't like know where the fuck Abu Dhabi is. I, I used to be good at geography, yeah, but I, I don't know. Too. The Middle East confuses me. Same. Where the fuck is Abu Dhabi at? That was the first thing. Some it, of it's like borderline <laughs> Europe. Some of it's borderline Asia. Some of it's in fucking Africa. It, like it just. <laughs> it's all over the place. I don't know where it's at. If you guys haven't noticed yet, uh, we're a couple of fucking idiots here so uh, <laughs> <laughs> i don't fucking know anyways yeah um so they uh they do have the schedule finalized um for 20 for for the next season 20 i 20 fucking what what year is it next i don't know i lost track 2021 there it is um but uh i'm trying to figure out where the fuck they're racing at this week hold on uh, i should have had it pulled up earlier but uh it was uh, it was an off week and uh I kind of forgot about F1 for the time being, but we got uh, the Turkish Grand Prix coming up, Istanbul Park, which is uh, mm -hmm. another uh, uh, circuit I don't really know a whole lot about. Uh, I don't know. I would imagine it's been on the F1 circuit before. Uh, as a matter of fact, I know it has. I don't know when the last time it was, but uh, it's a goofy-ass looking track. I'm going to put this shit in, the, <laughs> in general. Look at this shit. This is what uh, uh, I'm just looking at. I just pulled up a track map on Google Images for those who were listening. But uh, so this is why this is some of the things i don't like about f1 is that they go to these kind of circuits they're just like what the fuck am i looking at you know what i mean <laughs> it's got it's got like uh how many turns has this got 14 oh and it goes that way oh that's interesting um yeah i don't know it's just a goofy ass looking track hey if it uh if, if it's good for racing I'm, I'm all for it i was actually uh yeah i was watching uh i want to say it was sebastian vettel's on board uh from one of the last times they were there and it was uh it was quite the track uh it kind of reminded me of um Fuck, There's, they've brought so many new tracks, uh, or older tracks uh, that hadn't been on the circuit for a while uh, to the schedule that I'm now learning. Uh, it reminded me of, of one of the ones, uh, but I can't remember the name of it now. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm, uh, it's been really cool, though. This has been a really fun year to get into F1 just with all these new or, uh, new circuits or old, older circuits coming back that haven't been on the schedule. Uh, it's just been fun learning the, the circuits and, and the history of the circuits too. That's one of the biggest things, man. I, another reason why I really love watching F1 and something I wish NASCAR would do more. Uh, every time F1 goes to a track, like it's a, you know, big part of the weekend where they always talk about the history and, you know, previous winners and just some of the memorable moments uh, that have happened there over the years. It's like, well, you know, they, they have a NASCAR championship race at Phoenix, but it's like, you never fucking know. Like, if you're just sitting down there and watching, it's like, you never know anything about Phoenix. You don't know who's won there before or, you know, how it's played a factor uh, in the schedule at, at any point when it was built, you know, anything about it. You don't know anything about it. I fucking don't know anything about it. I don't know. Is that uh is that something you'd be interested in as a NASCAR fan? About what? About like track history and stuff like that. About NASCAR tracks? Yeah, well if you, if you pay attention to me for a couple seconds here. Uh, uh you would dude, when you start talking F1, my mind goes somewhere else. I'm sorry. Uh well anyways, uh well that like I said, the uh uh, F1 always makes it a point every week when they, you know, go to a track that they always bring up their history and, and how the track, you know, when it was built and how it's played a factor, who's won there, uh, the memorable moments that have been there and just how it's kind of played a factor in, in uh, previous years. But it's like, you know, you watch, you sit down and watch Phoenix uh, where the championship race is being held. If you're a new NASCAR fan, you wouldn't really know anything about Phoenix. Uh, and, of course, they don't tell you anything about it. Like, they don't tell you about the track. They don't tell you about previous winners. They don't tell you how it's fit in the schedule uh, in years past. They don't tell you anything about it. You know what I mean? I mean they just show the Boyer and uh, Gordon fight. <laughs> that's all you need, really. I mean, that's the thing. Like, NASCAR is supposed to be exciting. Like, I mean, if it's like, 
think about if we went to Kentucky. Like, what's the history of Kentucky? Like, oh, what we fucking do? There's been oh, well, they don't go to Kentucky anymore. Year. Yeah, I know, but this year, let's say they went to Kentucky. Oh, there's been ten boring races here, folks, and these guys have won. Who gives a fuck? If somebody got punched, somebody wrecked big, or somebody hit a photo finish, show that. Other I, than that, find another storyline. I mean, it's but it doesn't have to be a big thing, but it's like they do all this other pre-race horseshit. Why don't they fit that in, fit in something useful, you know? If you're watching NASCAR for the first time, maybe you want to know about the track. Where the fuck are we racing today? You know, what's, what's it been about? I don't know. I mean, they tell you where it's at. Well, thanks. <laughs> But well, how like, big it is, what else did, do you need but, to know? But they didn't even show the Clint Boyer, uh, Jeff Gordon things. It's like, isn't that something you'd want to see? Like, here's the stuff that's happened at Phoenix before. That's something I think NBC would be going after. They they don't they don't get enough of fucking fights well, and NBC crashes. NBC sucks. And shit. Exactly, NBC, that's the whole NBC point. NBC would rather just say, oh, look at the fans. Look at the <laughs> fans. There's fans. <laughs> look at the fans. There's fans at home. There's fans at the track. There's fans in the suite. There's fans on Zoom. Fuck the fans and fuck NBC. God, that <laughs> I had to get that one off my chest. That bothers me. I hate the fucking fans thing. They missed because they had to show the fucking fans. They missed all the Jimmy stuff post race where everybody was giving him a high five or whatever. NASCAR's faking it until they make it, man. Look at all our fans. <laughs> Look, we've got fans Jesus in the stands. No, I'm right there with you. That's another reason why I've been watching a lot of F1, man. I'm just like, I sit there and I watch the presentation of F1. I'm like, holy fuck, man. This is light years. And I mean light years ahead of anything on NBC. I, it's just like, like, that's how good it is. It makes F1 watchable for me. That's that's all I'm getting at. The biggest thing, dude, fucking Rick Allen, dude. What was that thing he said about Chase Briscoe's uh, old lady uh, that Jesus got people Christ. pissed off? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even hear had, it. His wife had two miscarriages this year, but on the bright side, he's going cup racing next year pretty much was what he said. Yeah, I saw uh, I saw somebody quote it, and then I saw some people upset because it wasn't the full quote. And it's like, I, you know, whatever. I, well, I, I saw the clip. DT posted the clip, and the quote wasn't far off. Yeah, like it it was basically I don't uh, two I, miscarriages. Uh, but good news is he's going cup racing next year. Like why? Why does it even need to be brought up, man? Like I don't get it. Because it's drama. I'm. <laughs> you know that's that's their idea of drama. I don't. I, I was, don't know. I was reading through Reddit, um, and there was somebody uh, who had, who had mentioned that Dale Jr. had mentioned um, was talking about Rick Allen, and he he has like a little book uh, that has everybody, you know, all the little storylines prepared and all that stuff. So I guess he goes to that in the, in the last couple laps. Somebody needs to burn that thing. Yeah. Jesus Christ! That's Sometimes why- he gets the flipping pages too slow too. I love when he starts <sighs> like the white flag, and he's like, "A year ago," and then it's like they're in turn three, and he's still in the first part of it, and he's like, "And now he's gonna be a cup winner." Yeah. <laughs> Well, that man, let me tell you, that's that's why Rick Allen is bad, in my opinion. He shouldn't be fucking having to go off a fucking book. Like, come on, man, use your head a little bit. Like, f- fucking uh, fill the moment. I feel yeah, like it don't. at Moon Vision, and we do just fine. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I mean, obviously, commentators should be prepared and have all their stuff, but it's like fucking Rick Allen, man. It's like. Just fucking, like, take a step back, take a deep breath, <laughs> and look at the track and, and see what the fuck's going on. I just feel like he gets, he gets, he just, that that's the fucking moral of the story with NBC is that they just fucking try too hard. And I can't, I like, I hate being the guy that's like, it just, that drags the fucking, because I always, I always hate it. Uh, I used to hate it. But now I almost kind of understand it. I don't know if it's gotten worse or it's just the same same old horse shit or what, but it's like fucking NBC is hard to watch, man. You got Rick Allen's dumb ass, and it's like, have, how many times have you, have you noticed? And it's it's funny now. It's like I want to uh, make it a drinking game. How many times have you noticed where, <laughs> where Rick Allen will say something that just doesn't, like, he'll say something that doesn't need to be said, and that same thing he says, it just it comes out awkward anyways. And then the entire fucking commentary booth of Dale Earnhardt Jr., Steve Letart, and Jeff Burton, and all the pit reporters just sit there, mouth shut, and it's just an awkward silence for like five, five, six seconds. I tweeted about it during the Indy race because they went, they were showing Kenseth, and Rick Allen was trying to do like, oh, I'm going to educate new fans thing. And I forget how he worded it, but he's like, and if. For those of you who don't know, at the beginning of the season, that ride was Kyle Larson's till he used the N word in an iRacing event, and now Matt Kenseth's filling in for it. I'm like, does that need to be said? Like, like why? Of all the storylines, hey, this old guy's filling in for this young guy because he said the N word on iRacing. Like, 
in what way does that need to be said to the new fans? You know what I mean? If they care that much, they'll just figure it out on their own. <sighs> Uh, man, I just fucking... <laughs> he just he has the talent of saying the wrong thing at the wrong time all the time. Yeah, he fucking... He, yeah, I think if he does indeed have a book, he needs to throw it away. I just... I, I, that's the biggest thing, man. It's like fucking... Take your head out of the book and just fucking call a race. He just tries too fucking hard. It's all NBC, man. Just fucking like... Yeah. That's been my gripe from the beginning. NBC feels so scripted. It always has, always has. Everybody everybody loves NBC for some reason. I'm not a big fan of their coverage. It feels so scripted because yeah. it's always Rick Allen with some bullshit storyline. Let's cut to Rutledge talking about the fans. Back up here to Steve, who's going to add weird emphasis at weird times and talk about strategy. <laughs> and then here's Jeff Burton, the least, aggress- least aggressive driver ever, talking about how if I'm in that position, I'm putting him five wide and hooking him head on in the wall, killing him so I don't have to race him for a championship. I'm like, no, you wouldn't have, Jeff. You just sat there and ran fifth. And then it goes to Junior, who, oddly enough, I thought would suck, who is the best member of that booth because he's the only one who brings any sort of genuine reaction to the booth. Yeah, Dale Jr. I mean, everybody. I how can he not like Dale Jr.? He's a little awkward, but I think he's. Uh, I think he's pretty solid. I really like Steve Letarte too. I think he's one of the few guys that actually knows what the fuck he's talking he's about. He's gotten a lot wise. better. He's gotten. A he's lot a better. smart if guy. He, the delivery might not all be there, but he's a smart yeah. guy. He always has been. He's got all the answers, and I, I'll give him credit there. Jeff Burton, I feel like could do good. Like I feel like if they just put Jeff in Xfinity and let him kind of be himself instead of making him try to be the hype man of the booth or whatever, it would go a lot better. Um, but I really do think it, a lot of it falls on Rick. You just have to have a good lead announcer. Yeah. Like that's Mike Joy well, does yeah. not get the credit. Larry McReynolds and Daryl Waltrip were not commentators. They were not. And Mike Joy exactly. made that booth great and made those two become great commentators because he could set them up great and let those two scream like a couple of rednecks. And it was still great because we got the information we needed from Mike and we got the excitement from DW. And then we got the car knowledge and excitement from Larry Mack. So it was perfect. That was the perfect booth. Same thing with the old uh, Alan Best with Benny Parsons mm. and uh, Wally. That was another great booth. So I don't know. They're, there need to be changes made. And I think Fox is actually going to get back to that with Boyer and uh, yeah. Gordon. I wish they had a crew chief in the booth. Um, and I think they're probably going to use Larry Mack a lot more remotely next year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next year, so that'll be good. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I uh, I don't know. I, I, I've always liked Fox more. I mean, a lot of that's not yeah, a I, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just I, uh, I always really like Fox is always pretty solid. It's not per- nothing's ever perfect, but it's like, and it gets to the end of the season, and NBC rolls around. I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> fucking man, Fox is pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, people shit on Fox this year too. They're like, man, NBC had better camera angles and all this. First of all, no, they didn't. But second of all, NBC has the advantage every year of getting to sit there for six months almost and watch what Fox does and learn what works, what the fans like, and what the fans don't like. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If Fox rolls out some new state-of-the-art drone cam, NBC has a few extra months to prep it and make it better. If Fox tries a new camera style, camera angle, or something like the Remember the gyro camera that oh, made it like a... Yeah, yeah. I tell you what, I don't uh, know if you remember Martinsville. They, uh, for the truck race, they had those uh, bumper cams. Those look so fucking good. Yeah. So NBC is already at an advantage because they get to monitor social media, see what the fans like, what don't, what they don't like, see what's cool, uh, maybe take an idea and tweak it a little bit and make it even better. Um, so they're already at an advantage, and they're not better. So I don't see how you can say they're better. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, of course, we've talked about fucking Vince Welch before. He's another one that uh, at this point, it's just like, I don't know. I guess Fox just doesn't really give a whole lot of a shit. He works. He's not the best, but he fucking, I don't know. I just, I don't understand it. He's, <laughs> I, I think he's probably the worst commentator. I, I, I hate, I hate to, I hate to do a man like that, but it's like. He's the worst commentator that has ever walked this earth. <laughs> nobody is worse at commentating that does it on a professional level yeah you might tune into some iRacing broadcasts uh, yeah <laughs> maybe yeah. one for 24 hours coming up here to hear a guy's pretty bad. <laughs> but as far as somebody who's making you know decent money i'd imagine and doing it on network television 
you will not find one worse than Vince Welch. Vince Welch is like the kind of guy where it's like, for whatever reason, the lead commentator was sick one week, and then you know he stepped in, and for whatever reason, he never stepped back out. I don't know. <laughs> well, the the truck boot's been weird because you had um, Rick Allen who jumped ship for NBC after an Eldora race, and they didn't make a huge deal out of it. He just disappeared. And then they brought Steve Burns in. And Steve actually did a really good job in the booth. I didn't think he would do that great, but he did really good in the booth. Um, and then, obviously, he ended up uh, getting sick and passing away. And I guess through all that time, they went to Vince Welch. And I, I guess they just never could find anyone else. <laughs> Because <laughs> he ended up staying. Oh, man, yeah, I, um, I just, I see, I don't understand that, man. Because like, if I'm like anything involved in NASCAR, I'm like, man, that's like, that's what counts, man. Is putting on a really good broadcast, like as best as you can. You know what I mean? Because like, yeah, because like at the end of the day, man, that's how you get new fans involved, man. You want to put on as bad, like you want to put on, uh, you want to show as best a show as you possibly can. Um, fucking Kurt Busch, man. I really like him as a commentator. I think he's really good. Yeah. Uh, he's been really fun. Uh, and he's been a big part of the uh, the the truck series broadcast, man. I think he's really fun to listen to, and he's he's another guy, man. He uh, he knows what he's talking about. Um, but um, yeah, man. Anyways, this uh, is kind of a long tangent from F one, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think uh, I just I think the broadcast is a huge deal, man. I mean, uh, I let me know what you guys think. Uh, that's always been my biggest argument is just watching F one. And, and just how down to a science, like how good it is, man. From week to week, it's consistent. Uh, they deliver all the information you need to know. They talk to all the drivers. Um, and that, that's another thing, I guess, about F1 is that they've only got 20 drivers. You know, it's not like a full 40 where it's like you know everybody's story going into the race. Um, they talk about everybody in the race for the most part. Um, and and that's, uh, you know, I, I would imagine it's hard to do with uh, when you get you're pushing 40 cars uh for your fields but um yeah uh, let me know what you guys think man i'm really curious if you guys still listen to some of the, some f1 the formula fans out there uh who, who who may have just recently got into it and started watching it let me know what you guys think of the broadcast uh, for f1 compared to uh to nascar because I, I just think it's a it's just night and day difference it really is man uh, but uh i think that's uh just about it for what we've got today yes sir um, do we want to go ahead and tell them what we're doing with uh, the next week's podcast? Oh, yeah. We're doing the gassies. Yes. Yeah, so we're going <laughs> to try to roll out some awards. We're going to have a, an award show next week. Uh, for this uh, NASCAR season, we're going to hand out some gassies to uh, uh, probably some good gassies and probably some, some smelly gassies, but uh, we'll have them next week. And then uh, we're going to have some, uh, hopefully some uh, another special one lined up after that. And uh, we'll go from there. So uh, now we're officially into the off season. I guess we can always take some ideas as well for guests and and just stuff we can do in the off season. Man, we've talked about a lot of stuff, but uh, let us know what you guys want to uh, hear as well. But it's uh, it's been a it's been a hell of a ride. I tell you that. Um, I don't know about you, man, but I'm really proud of how the, the podcasts have done uh, through this entire NASCAR season and going into the next one. I think we've learned a lot. Um, and uh, I, I've, I've actually had a really fun time. It, it hasn't been a, a huge workload. It's been something we've been able to do pretty uh, uh, consistently, but um, you know, it hasn't been a huge uh, strain. And it's it's fit in pretty good. And it's uh, I think a lot of people have had a good time with it. A lot of people have enjoyed listening. The numbers continue to go up, and uh, we're I, I I think we're doing good, man. I think uh, we're onto something here. Yeah. All right, well, I'll go fuck myself. Thanks, everybody. Listen. What? I mean, what do you want me to say? I don't know. Oh, I had a great time too, cozy oh, man. Yeah, thanks it was for awesome. th- you know, thanks for doing great. this thing with me, and uh, you know, thanks to everybody for listening. <laughs> All right, everybody, this has been the Gas Holes Podcast, man. We appreciate you. We love you. Uh, we'll be back next week with some gassies and whatever, what, whatever the hell else we got to talk about next week, man. We love you. We'll see you guys next time.